This is Doombox, and I am going to tell you how to get 100% world completion. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Doombox. I used to post weekly Guild Wars 1 guides, but then I just straight up uh, died. But then somebody rubbed my leg until I came back to life. Since there are already so many Guild Wars 2 videos out there, um, my, my goal with these is they're going to be geared more towards newer players. They're going to be sort of general, you know, overviews of different concepts of the game. But at the same time, they should also be entertaining for the more experienced players. Well, that's enough uh, chit-chat for now. Let's get back to basics. So, as you're exploring the world of Tyria, you'll encounter five different little icons on your map. You've got points of interest, vistas, skill points, renowned farts, and waypoints. For each zone you're in, there's a little meter in the top left corner of your map that shows you the percent completion you've done of that specific map so far. And if you get every single one of these points within the zone you're in, you'll get 100% map completion just for that specific zone only. Now getting 100% world completion means you do this for every single map in the game, including towns and world v world. So why would somebody want to do this? Well, for one, when you do this, you get a cool little gold star next to your character name that everyone can see. You also get a title that's called Been There, Done That. You also get a giant golden star thingy on your login screen, which only you can see. I guess if that interests you, you can go for that. But the main reason people try and get world completion is for the gift of exploration. You actually get two of these, and these are used for making legendary weapons. So when you're running around a zone, waypoints are probably the easiest thing to discover. You just walk right up to it and you unlock it. Pretty simple. Um, points of interest are sort of similar. They show up as little square thingies on your map, and when you walk up to it, you also unlock it. But sometimes points of interest are a little bit harder to find than waypoints. A lot of times they're, you know, in a little cave or something like that. So you might have to explore a little bit to find that specific point. Vistas usually involve some sort of climbing or jumping to get to like a high up point where you can go view it. You uh, interact with the vista when you're next to it and it shows a little mini cutscene of like the area around you. They're kind of cool. I usually end up skipping all of them because I'm lame. But if you want an enjoyable experience, you can watch them all. Skill points show up on your map as a little blue sort of triangle shaped thingy and there's usually a little challenge associated with it. A lot of times you'll have to fight like a mini boss or you know pick up a specific item and use it within your inventory. Completing these little skill challenges will give you a skill point which you can later use to unlock skills. And skill points are also used later on for purchasing like expensive Mystic Forge recipes and stuff like that. And then we've got Renown Hearts. You either love these or you hate these. So these pretty much replace the traditional like quest that you would receive in another MMO. When you're within range of the heart it'll show up in the corner of your screen and then there'll be a list of tasks for you to complete in that area um, and as you complete tasks the bar fills up and then once the bar fills up you complete the heart so just a heads up it does get a little boring and monotonous if you keep doing this over and over and over again for each map so i'm going to give you a few tips to make your experience a little more enjoyable and time efficient so if you plan on getting 100% world completion, you're not just going to want to run around the zone like a chicken with its butt chopped off, hoping you somehow randomly uncover every single point on the map. There are three methods you can use to be a little more organized in your map completion. First, you've got the zigzag method. This is where you start at the top or bottom of the map and just work your way in like a snake-like pattern all the way down. This helps you keep track of everything you've uncovered better so you don't end up like backtracking and wasting time. Then you've got the toilet bowl method. This is probably my favorite one and I used this when I did world completion. This is where you spiral around the outside edge of the map and slowly work your way towards the middle. To me this just seems the most efficient. 
Or what you can do is right when you get in the zone, you just run around the entire zone, like defogging everything on the map so you can see where everything is. That way you can just work your way in an efficient pattern from each point onto the next, knowing exactly where the next one is. To me, it seems like that's less efficient, but I know some people that use this method and think it's like really good. But hey, just pick whatever method smokes your granny's fanny. And if you have a different one, feel free to go ahead and use that. Another tip is just don't rush. Um, Guild Wars 2 is a really cool looking game, especially if you've got a good graphics card. Just take the time to, to stop and smell the roses, if you know what I mean. Um, and just look at the scenery and like, don't just like stare at your map the whole time trying to get to the next point as fast as possible because then you like miss out on one of the more enjoyable experiences of the game. I know it's sort of old and boring and you, you know, you just want to finish so you can get the stupid gift of exploration, but it honestly makes it a lot more enjoyable if you just slow down and like enjoy the scenery and don't don't treat it like it's a grind. But if you still do get bored, then you know, grab a friend or turn on the music and start bumping the bass just to make it feel less like a chore. I would also recommend starting with towns because those are just a pain and they're annoying and it's good to just get those out of the way right at the beginning. And also, don't forget about World v. World. For some reason, all of the World v. World maps, except for Edge of the Mists, count towards world completion. Um, this is kind of irritating because if you don't control a specific territory, like, you can't get that point of interest. The best way to do this is to just be patient. Like, you know, if you just run around with your world zerg for a while, you'll, you'll uncover most of the points. Um, if there's one specific point of interest or something that you're missing, you can either wait until your team changes colors or just wait until, like, world to world reset and right away, like, grab a couple of friends and just run like the Dickens for that fort and, like, try and capture it before anyone else gets there. That's that's the best way to do it. I know it's kind of frustrating that you have to do World of the World, but, hey, it is what it is. So I can't tell you the number of times people have been like, oh my gosh, I'm missing one point of interest on the map and I don't know where it is. Um, there's a little point of interest in the Chantry of Secrets in Blood Tide Coast. You just have to walk in there to unlock it, but people, people always forget this one, and... It's funny because they like can't figure out where it is. They're like, where is this point of interest I'm missing? It's in the Chandler of Secrets. You got to just go in there. So there are some places that don't count for world completion. For example, the inside of dungeons, those don't count. Hall of Monuments, that doesn't count. Anything in like Heart of the Mists, um, structured PvP, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And then any of the zones that were added in the game after release, so like South Sun Cove, Dry Top, Silver Waste, stuff like that, you don't have to go there even though there are vistas and points of interest and stuff in there. They just don't count, so you don't have to worry about those. Also, if you're just exploring a zone and you absolutely cannot finish the vista or there's a point of interest that's just, you know, it's just so obnoxious and you can't find out where it is, um, there are billions of online resources that have, you know, maps and guides and, like, vi videos for vistas and stuff like that that you can find that show you exactly how to do it step by step. So, don't worry, there's loads of online resources out there for you. Oh, well, this, this is the lamest guide ever. All, all you did was, like, tell us to Google search things. That's not helpful at all. Um, I'm trying new stuff out. If you don't like this sort of broad overview style of video and you'd rather see me do, like, specific, like, COF Path 1 speedrun tutorial, even though there's, like, 10,000 of those out there, if you want to see something like that instead. So, let me know if you liked it or if you hated it or if you have um, you know, any suggestions you'd like to see for future videos, feel free to let me know. Um, it's been a really, really long time since I've made a video like this, um, so your feedback would be really helpful in helping me move forward in making new videos. Um, thank you so much for watching, and uh, like, and a favorite, comment, subscribe, and share this video on Facebook and Reddit. <coughs> Uh, just kidding. What I meant to say was, this is Doombox, signing. Uh, 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 I just spit on my keyboard.